So in this video we'll check out number three, part D, from the 2013 A, B, and B, C exam. And in part D, they tell us that the amount of coffee in our cup is now going to be modeled by this function. So throughout the first three pieces of this problem, we were using the information in the table, the actual amount of coffee that was measured to be in the cup after one, two, three, four, five, and six minutes. And now they're saying that this function models this set of data. Using this model, find the rate at which the amount of coffee in the cup is changing when t equals 5. So the key word in that sentence is rate, and we want to know the rate at t equals 5. So in calculus, we've always said that the derivative of a function at a certain instant is the instantaneous rate of change of that function at that instant. So what we really want to do here in part D is we want to evaluate b prime of 5. And if we go ahead and first try to find b prime of t, The derivative of 16 is 0, and then I'm going to copy this constant into my derivative. So I have this constant factor of negative 16 that I'm copying in it, and now I need the derivative of e to the negative 0.4t. Well, the derivative of a natural exponential is the same natural exponential. The only other thing that I'm in need of doing here is I'm in need of using the chain rule. I need to multiply by the derivative of this inner function. I don't just have a t in this exponent. I have an inner function of t. So the derivative of negative 0.4t is going to be negative 0.4. So here is b prime of t. And we can clean this up a little bit if we wanted to. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to try to evaluate b prime of 5. So let's see. b prime of 5 is going to really be 5 tossed in place of this t. And then we'll just try to simplify that a bit. So we're looking at a negative 16 times a negative 0.4. So our answer is going to be a positive, and that should make sense. The amount of coffee in this cup is definitely going up as the coffee cup fills with coffee. So that's good. We have a positive rate of change. Let's see. What is 16 times 0.4? Should we bother doing that? Let's see. 16 times 0.4 or times 4 tenths is going to be, well, Let's see if we cancel a five, a two from there and end up with a five. Cancel two from there and end up with a four. We end up with what? Thirty-two over five. So we end up with thirty-two fifths for negative sixteen times negative point four, and then we're going to have times e to the negative point four times five. So before I put that into my answer here, I'm just going to do a little bit of arithmetic with that. If I want to know what negative point four times five is. A little bit of a pain to do this without a calculator, but as long as you're careful converting to fractions, it's really not too bad. So if we go with negative 4 tenths times 5, uh, we can go ahead and we can cancel that with that, and we're going to end up with a 2 in that denominator, so this ends up being uh, negative 2. So it really ends up being e to the negative 2. So the instantaneous rate of change of the amount of coffee in the cup at t equals 5 is whatever the value of this is. And without a calculator, uh, this is about as good as we're going to do. Really, the only other thing that you might consider doing here, since that e has a negative exponent on it, you could move it across the fraction bar and into the denominator of the fraction with the 5. So this would be the instantaneous rate of change of the amount of coffee in the cup at t equals 5. I actually just want to say one more thing before we wrap this up. Uh, it doesn't really ask you to do this in Part D, but a lot of the time it asks you for units of measure, and I, I should have probably put the units on this answer before I, I tried to wrap up the video there a few seconds ago. But this is a slope calculation. The, the value of a derivative is really a slope calculation. And so slope would be values of the function measured in ounces over values of the independent variable, which in this case is measured in minutes. So this set of units, even though it doesn't ask, would be ounces per minute.